This weekend, I got super lucky. Justin from the Brewing Network invited me down to his bar, The Hop Grenade, to taste Pliny the Younger. And man, was it good. So check out this quick clip of Olin and I enjoying it right off the tap. I mean, it's 60 degrees out, 65 degrees out. It's February. 11 a.m. in February. We're out having a Pliny the Younger. Tell, telling our wives, yeah, I got to step out to have a Pliny the Younger. Well, I said it was a business meeting. <laughs> All right, OJ. So when, uh, when's the last time you've had one of these? I think the only time I've ever had it is when you got a bottle. So this is my second time ever having the Younger. Oh, you're such a rookie. I know. That was 2020 that they did it in bottles. And you had to buy the whole mixed case to get those two bottles. And we flooded the uh, servers so badly that I think they changed what kind of service they used. I had iPhone, two computers, a laptop, and I think an iPad. Well, Chris is the IT guy, yeah. so that's why he got I, in. I got my share. Yeah. <laughs> so how many times did you have? Before? I got lucky. Um, Amy worked at Peach for 20-something years, and they always had a, a keg or two there that they would give out to their top customers. That thusly how we got it here. And so we would call down on their days. They would give it out to their VIP customers and ask if they would just put like a half pour in the cold box and get to try it later that night. And what do you remember about the flavors from those? Because I don't really remember the one time I had I felt like they were more hop aggressive, like like the finishing hop aggressive, where yeah. this to me has beautiful hop, but it, it's more in the front, like right as you put it in your mouth and not as like fruity floral. Yeah, this has a lot of hop aroma, uh, actual fresh hop aroma coming right out of the glass. Like, you know when you have a fresh hop beer and you get that uh, actual, like, you're smelling the whole hops right out of the bag, rather than kind mosaic or citra. Celebration. Old school hops. Old school hops. And that's kind of what this feels like back to West Coast IPAs. Yeah. Well, super clean, dry finish, kind of a, you know, a, a little bit of a hop uh, bite up front, but not, not overly aggressive. But this cheers. is so good that I feel like giving away some free stuff. This week's Kid of the Week also has a little bit of personal meaning to me, and that is our Dark Hill Porter. It's got two reasons it has great meaning to me. And aside from being a great beer, it's an homage to Black Butte Porter from Deschutes. If you've never had it, you should really go out and try that beer. It's beautifully done. But one, it was on my very first brew day that we had some beer while we made beer. Shocker, I know. And that was the beer I was drinking. And I thought to myself, wow, this is next level beer. So much complexity, such beautiful malt character, um, awesome chocolates and such mixed in, and just incredible. You'll love it. Second, my son's name Porter. And I will always love Porter's as a beer. And now I get to love Porter as a son. To win this beer, simply go to morebeer.com forward slash free beer Friday and enter the weekly survey. Now let's talk about ALDC enzyme with Vito. So Vito, the last batch of beer we brewed together, you had me bring home ALDC. And this is an enzyme I'd never heard of before. The only time I've heard it mentioned was during a Doze meeting, which is our local homebrew club, where we had on Vinny from Russian River. That was a pretty cool talk, but I didn't know we were gonna use it in our homebrew. What does ALDC do? Yeah, so it's an enzyme, um, and what it does is it, it basically stops diacetyl from being produced. Um, diacetyl it gets produced, uh, or, the, or the precursor to it, VDKs during fermentation. It, it naturally occurs during fermentation, uh, and then it becomes diacetyl. What is diacetyl? Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a butter popcorn, kind of a slickness, and it's you know one of the, the biggest off flavors in beer that's out there. Um, so this enzyme stops diacetyl from being created. That's impressive. Well, what Vinny was talking about wasn't diacetyl, it was hop creep. How does this relate to hop creep and what is hop creep? So what hop creep is, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, it's just a relatively new term that, that's popped up and, and there's a reason that it's relatively new. People have been dry hopping for a long time, but 
we've increased the amount of dry hops, but there's also something that the hop growers and, and hop processors are doing differently now. They've lowered their kilning temperatures when they're drying the hops and also pelletizing the hops. By lowering that, it's led to a more fruitier flavors, better aromas. You know, you're not denaturing or, or not denaturing, but it, reducing the amount of theols and things like that are produced. But what it's doing is it's not denaturing another enzyme that is naturally present on, on, on hops and all fruit for that matter. It's called the AMG enzyme. And what that enzyme does is it breaks down sugars or it breaks down starches into sugars. So by not uh, kilning them as high, you now have AMG enzyme on your hop. You're adding more hops. Hops also have sugars in them as well. So a secondary fermentation happens when you dry hop. So it sounds like these are mostly used for our new school IPAs, highly hopped and all of that. Does this have any other uses? Yeah, so diacetyl is created in, in any fermentation, be it a lager, you know, there's a re we do a, a, a temp raise at the end, the diacetyl rest. So, so for me personally, in a, in a brewing environment, I like to just put it in, in any of my, you know, it's part of my standard operating procedures. I like to refer to it as like the Frank's hot sauce. I put that shit on everything. So it's like great preventative tool to use. Yeah, when it does its job correctly, you shouldn't notice any flaws in your beer, and that's just a great insurance policy. So let's talk about how homebrewers would use this. How much should they use and when should they use it? Yeah, so how much you use one dropper full. So it's just a little tiny amount um, that we, we sell it packaged out and it's one full dropper. You do it right after uh, you've knocked out and, and moved your wort. So when it's cooled, because you don't want to uh, do it above 120 degrees, I believe is when this enzyme denatures. So right before you pitch your yeast, essentially, on primary fermentation, you could also add it right before you dry hop as well. Um, this enzyme, I think below 4.2 pH is when it denatures. So as long as your beer, most finished beer is about 4.748, it'll still work in that. <clears throat> a kettle sour, a dry hop kettle sour, it's not gonna work for you. Well, awesome. Thanks for talking about ALDC. We're gonna keg that batch up tonight and be tasting it next week. So we'll know all about it after that. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers. Hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed that talk about the ALDC enzyme. You could try it out for yourself using this promo code. Quick reminder, don't forget to enter our monthly giveaway, which happens to be torpedo kegs. Go to morebeer.com forward slash free beer Friday and enter the monthly giveaway. Thanks for watching. See you next Friday. Cheers. Cheers.